Hi, oh, yes, hello, dear. So we're back. Um, we do want to talk here, since we are in Munich and we want to talk about timelines, let's talk a little bit about Munich's history. All right, and some of the things that have happened here and what you are doing. You know, we talked about activating a vortex, but we're also going through a process of healing and um, a lot of guilt uh, that's grounded here from the history, not, in, not only in the last uh, decade or in the last century, but also in the last millennia. All the things that have transpired over the earth. And it just continues. There's a reason why actions are recreated in a particular area because that frequency is held in the earth and it gets uh, projected and re manifested, all right, through the beings who, uh, as a collective, are living there. All right. So, you know, your Holocaust, your healing, and it is a continuation of things that have happened on other planets. And we talked about subjugation. Uh, a repression of other beings earlier, and that is a huge um, issue for many parts of the galaxy. Also, um, purity of race. All right, you've got all these different species, especially in the Syrian star system. It's incredibly diverse. And for some races, the issues that they work on, um, they are very bloodline oriented. All right, your draconian species, your dragons. Um, they are very, very bloodline oriented and they're very fierce when it comes to protecting the family. And if you're an outsider, it's very hard to get in. So one of the upsides is that they're incredibly loyal, but they exclude everyone else. So again, everything that you do here on this planet is a mirror for what is going on in other parts of the galaxy. All right. Uh, because remember, you're holographic, <coughs> so you're not just working on it in one location. Uh, and also, you know, to use another phrase, as above, so below. As you experience things on the planet, and how you experience them also happens in the other realms in the same way. Just a slightly different perspective, a different skew on it, but it's still going on. We still have duality, but our duality isn't as extreme as yours. Our duality is uh, much, much more narrow in its uh, diversity and its polarity. But we still have disagreements. We don't war over it. We don't kill each other over it. But we have conversations and we agree to disagree and then move down uh, different paths. Uh, and, you know, we do have our own sense of competition. We'll be honest, you know, say my path works better than yours. Let's see how it runs, <laughs> you know, but we're not blowing each other up. So, you know, it's not a utopia where we're at, you know, and, and we don't want you to have this illusion that where you're moving into in the fifth dimension is going to be a utopia because it's not. You're still going to have things that you're working on, still things that you want to learn because utopias are really boring. <laughs> When you have no diversity, it gets really bland. So unless you're really up with, uh, you, you know, creator and you're in complete joy, um, you know, why would you recreate that anywhere else in between? And the whole point of fracturing self and splitting off from creator energy is to have a different kind of experience. So you want to have something that's a little different. And when you want the most different experience there is, you say, I'm going to go to Earth. Because it is so different from your natural state of being. You, are com you think that you're completely separate and you've got all of these emotions, all of these fears, variations on a theme. All right. So now what we're trying to get you to do and what you're working on is to bring more joy. So you're narrowing that gap. You're narrowing the polarity. You're integrating polarity. But you'll still have it. There will be some. Uh, you're really going to have to work on discernment as well because as you move into the higher realms, you're going to be reintroduced to the galactic community. And again, not everyone's got your best interest at heart. Um, you know, they're not buying what you're selling because they don't want to heal. Um, but it's a different game. It's a different game. There are different rules. And it's, it's a lot of fun. But getting back to timelines in Munich, what you're doing here is healing a lot of energy that's been stuck. And it's not just here. There are other places on the planet where 
there's been a lot of bloodshed that more and more light is now starting to come to because Mother Earth herself is, as we said, going through this ascension process. So she's got to change her overall vibration. And there are places on the planet where this energy is stuck and you are infusing it with light. And through the laws of resonance, what happens is when you've got high vibrational energy in the presence of low vibrational energy, the low vibrational energy must either transmute itself and come up to that higher level or it's going to be repelled and move away. So when you've got all this high vibrational energy being infused, what happens is it gets transmuted. You all process it. So there are many areas that were once considered to be high vibrational areas which don't feel as high anymore because they are more the norm. And there are places that are starting to wake up and so there are a lot of you uh, starting to come together in these areas to infuse it with that energy and that's where you say, ah, that place feels really high because that's where the focus of that energy is going at the moment and that's going to change on different you know different places in the planet um, as we go over the next several years as you go over the next several years um, and we're excited to see how you all manage because we don't know how this is going to play out because you have so many choices in vibration um, what also happens as you increase your frequency, the illusion of time changes. As you get higher in frequency, time is compressed. Frequencies don't move through time and space at the same rate. You scientists might balk at this, but we'll tell you that you know they're not measuring it in the same way that we are, but it doesn't. So the higher you go in frequency, the faster things tend to move. When you look at your energetic body, it's not that your body's falling apart. It's just that there are certain cells that aren't resonating at the same high rate. So they're not regenerating as fast as the rest of your body. So from your perspective, it looks like they're falling apart. But they are still constantly in a state of regeneration. And when you get that, when you see that, when you, you make that slight shift in your perspective, it makes a big difference in your body and how your body repairs itself. But your days where you used to feel you had 24 hours, you're, right now you're about 14. You feel like you've got about 14 hours, for so some of you even 12. But that can all be manipulated. You can start altering time. You can start stepping out of time. And we're going to give you a couple exercises here to do that. One is to see two clocks. One is your personal time clock, the other is the time clock for your geographical location. If you need more time, say you're running late or you're in traffic, you can set your clock back. All right, you can give yourself more time. If you are bored and you want to get out of somewhere, like a lecture or a workshop, <laughs> and we're hoping you don't feel that way at the moment, <laughs> you move the clock forward all right, to accelerate time. When you're done, you just need to make sure that you set your clock back in synchronous time because otherwise you're going to feel very um, spacey and you're going to feel very out of it because you literally are. You're out of sync with uh, what else is going on. Yes. You can reset that body clock. Um, there are other ways, and that is the direct projection of your energy. So you are inserting yourself into a time. So if you want to arrive somewhere, normally it takes a half hour for you to get there, and you need to arrive there in 15 minutes, you project yourself and see yourself there in 15 minutes at that specific time. You all have this preconceived notion how, of how long it takes to get from A to B, so guess what? That's how long it takes to get from A to B. If you project that you're arriving at a specific time, that's what you manifest for yourself. Do you all get that? That's huge for you when you really do get it. Because you can, it's like folding time or bending time. Because it's all an illusion. But it's all these belief systems that you've set up for yourself from birth about how long it takes to accomplish X, Y, and Z. How long it takes to manifest something. If you think it takes a really long time 
to heal your body, then it's going to take a long time to heal your body. If you know that you can have a change in your body with every single breath, and that is your belief system, then you can alter your body at will. And that's what we talk about as you move into the fifth dimension, and you can alter your physical structure because you understand that. That's your natural state of being, to, to create and recreate your, yourself. Because you do it with every single breath. Every breath you take, you reproject your belief system onto reality. Reality doesn't change much because your belief systems don't change much from breath to breath. But if you can change your belief systems, your reality can change drastically with the next breath. So you can alter your time and how you, you move through it by your projection of where you want to be when, of asserting yourself, of placing yourself in that timeline, on that frequency, because that's what you're doing. Remember, time doesn't exist. All that exists are all these little separate nows on different strings. So what you're doing is you're projecting yourself onto a different string in which your arrival is that time. There may be 10 strings that have your uh, arrival time a minute apart. All right, So you pick the one and you project yourself in the one that's the one that you'd like to experience. Now that's a lot for you all to take in, to think that just in your action of arriving someplace there are 10 options. You think, well, think about all my other options that I might have and all the other timelines. And, and you all can start to get a bit overwhelmed. But just know that, you know, you only pull the ones into focus that you need. You don't have to worry about all the rest. They're all taken care of. The universe does that for you. The universe, the grand design, the game, game masters that are actually you, because remember, your divine source, there's part of you that's doing that. But this version of you doesn't have to worry about it. All you are required to do is to pay attention to your vibrational state, because your vibrational state is the projection that creates the physical reality. So if you can stay in the now, you're not losing any energy to the past or the future, and you can really be aware of where your vibration is at every single moment. Do I like how I'm feeling? If not, why not? Is fear getting activated? All right, fear is getting activated. What fear is it? And you can look at the fear. One way to clear fear is to see why you create it in the first place, how it is of service to you, to say, uh, you know, I can't do that alone. Maybe that's your fear. Well, that fear kept you from having to step outside of your comfort zone, trying new things. But now you're ready to spread your wings and it's no longer of service to you. But it helped you at that point because you felt that it kept you safe because of perhaps some past life issue that you don't know about. So when you see that it was of service to you to have that program at a particular time, but not so much now, it's like that aha moment that you all get, and you, you integrate it, you let it go, you drop it. And then you can adjust your frequency and create more of what you want. And when you're in the now, that's really the only time that you can really gauge where you're vibrating. You can't be in tune with your body and your frequencies if you're focused on the future or the past, because it's an energetic drain. The more energy and more focus that you have right here, right now, the more you can gauge of, do I like it, do I not like it, and what's going on. So if there's one thing that you can leave with this evening, is to try to be as conscious as you can to be in the now. There's one thing that you can do, because that is what will help you to alter your life the most. It's not about changing a belief about this or that, or focusing on the individual beliefs. They'll come up when the time is ready, when the time is right. Just focus on being present. And the more often you do that, the more you recognize when you're not in it. You catch yourself and say, oh, I've dropped out of that vibration. Because being in the now also allows you to be in higher vibrations. Because your energy is higher. Um, it doesn't mean that you don't hold lower frequencies. All right? but you're aware of when you hold them, so you shift them, and that you have fewer and fewer of them. See how that works? So it is probably one of the most potent things that you can do for yourself. The other thing we want to talk about here with choice is that you're never locked into a choice. 
Remember, there are all these infinite timelines and you get to choose which one you like and you're constantly moving back and forth between them. So you can start down one, take two steps and say, oh no, this really isn't what I wanted and go on to another one. You make a new vibrational choice. So you're never trapped. And a lot of you spend time in indecision, not knowing which way to turn. You know, do I choose this or do I choose that? It stops your energetic flow. All right, it blocks it. So at least if you start down a path, your energy is moving and you can shift to another timeline because you say, oh, this isn't exactly what I wanted. It's not wrong. It wasn't a wrong choice. It was a vibrational choice. And then you get to make a course correction. But if you never leave the port, how can you, you know, change your course? All right. Yes. Question? We sensed a question. <coughs> Anders, was there a question there? <laughs> Wonderfully boggles me this thing of, for example, your, your example that you gave that we want, we, we're in a situation where we need to bend time because we don't have as much linear time as we can see on our clock, for example, until we need to be somewhere. And I just wanted to, not so much for the individual situation in itself, that's of course also nice to know how to do that, but there's something about understanding that particular thing which is a daily situation that in grasping that, I have a feeling that that will open up for the more general understanding of how these, how these things really work. So, I don't know, could you... I, I think my brain perhaps understood that I could set this clock, but uh, does it mean, that would be my question, that as I project out, I need to be there in 15 minutes, and this looks as if it takes at least half an hour, does it mean that I have the ability to project this out because not only do I create uh, myself in a situation, but I create actually, in other words, I don't create a part of my reality, I create my whole reality. Yes, and you create through attraction. So as you change your vibrational patterning to accept that you can be there, you change what is either blocking you, your blockage in your belief system, or you clear the path. So if you've got traffic, and your belief system says, I can get there, everything else parts. Or you find another way to get there. All right. So we gave you two exercises. One is for the intellectual mind, all right, which gives you the example. The other one is more of a feeling example, which is it's far more powerful because it is, um, you're working more with the emotional field. Thoughts create form, but your emotional states vibrated into being. So when you project and feel yourself being somewhere, and inserting yourself into that space, um, it's coming from a heart center as opposed to the mind. It's a feeling state. So they're slightly different exercises. Uh, but if you have a hard time with that, you can use the visual for those of you who are analytical. Um, it is going to change for everybody because time's going to compress more and more and you're all thinking, well, this is just silly. I can't keep running on a treadmill like this because nothing gets done and then that list gets huge. And what happens after a while it's this long list of things that you think you have to do and eventually you say, I can't do it, I've got to step out. I have to step out of time. So it builds up to this pressure point where, where you, you, it's, it doesn't feel good to operate in that mechanism any longer. And so you will all leap out, all of you uh, uh, will, will shift in that perspective. Now while we're talking about this we also want to talk about timelines and different versions of the planet, which coexist, coexist one on top of another. So there are different versions, which are different vibrational frequencies, which coexist. And as they move forward down the timeline, if you will, to use, still use the linear time perspective, they start to pull apart. All right. And then they become two different strings. All right, they, they separate on the vibrational string. And that's what's happening. They are pulling farther and farther apart. So if you're vibrating at the higher range, you're on version B planet. If you're vibrating at the lower range, you're on version A. And A will continue on down its timeline until they create some sort of cataclysmic event where they go through the death cycle so that those beings can 
um, move on to another planet that has a similar paradigm because Earth is going to remove her energy from the third. She's done. For those of you who want to continue on into the higher realms, what you will continue to see is life just progressing. It's just normal and natural and your thoughts change. If you think back 10 years ago and your belief systems are probably a little different than they are now. But this is just life and how you get there was just life. So it's not going to seem like, oh, we have all these things to do. It's just normal and you, you make those adjustments. Now you can make them a bit more consciously, which means that it's a bit easier. It's not as challenging because you're in the driver's seat. You've all got to get in the driver's seat um, to say, this is what I want to create. And that happens when you're in the now. And it can only happen when you're in the now. Because otherwise, it's kind of haphazardly how you get there. If you're not really paying attention and you're not consciously projecting yourself, sometimes you kind of drift off this way. And you say, oh, wait, what am I doing? And then you've got to come back to center as opposed to just going straight because you know where you're going and where you want to get. So all of you are going to start working in, in moving time, challenge, challenging time. Also, as you raise your vibration, you're going to understand it more and more as an illusion. That will come with it, and that's what will seem normal and natural to you all as well. So it's not going to seem like this bizarre concept. But what you will notice is that there will still be other people who are operating in that old paradigm and experiencing it that way. Chances are you're going to start stop drawing as many people in who have that belief system, all the people that you're going to start interacting with, share your belief that everything's malleable. But you can watch on the news and watch in neighbors and people that you don't have a lot of contact with. You can see how they still struggle to get everything done. And they're still working very hard to work to make money to live. You know, that old way of being, instead of just allowing yourselves to be a creator being and manifesting exactly what it is you want. You don't have to have money to buy something, you just manifest that something. It's a different way of being. And that, you know, a society without money blows all of your minds. What is that like? What does that mean? How does that operate? The only thing that you have that's close to it is the barter system. And there are many, many um, issues tied with that system that have come from uh, some of the manipulation, some of the um, coercion that's come from those systems in the past. Um, so, what systems was that? Uh, where you had bartering. They tend to be communes. Uh, that's the only reference point that you have for it um, in modern day. Or um, that people were a little flaky or a little strange. So there are negative connotations that go along with that that are embedded in mass consciousness. So many of you have a difficult time seeing any other way except for the bartering system. And you think, well, I'm not sure I want to do that because you get triggered from these other judgments. But it's not just bartering. It's, it's energetic exchange, but it's a little different than that. It's also simply manifesting. You just create it. You just generate it. And then you share that energy and those things with other people. It's not, I'll give you this if you give me that. It doesn't work that way in the higher realms. When will that be? Very, very soon. Uh, as you shift into the higher dimensions. Uh, you'll play around with it more and more in the fourth and in the fifth you will be there. You will be there. Um, the fourth we anticipate, and again we don't know how this is going to play out because we don't know what choices you have. Because along with this accelerate, acceleration, you have more and more choices now in this short period of time. That's the other part of it. So as you make these choices, um, you're changing timelines faster and faster. And moving back and forth based on all these choices. So we're not certain which one you're going to land on. So this version of you, how do we tell you which version, which timeline you're going to be on? It's very, very hard. So some things we can see kind of as a collective. But we also are very careful about what we tell you is going to happen in time. Because the more you focus on it, the more you manifest it. So if we tell you something's going to happen, you're going to increase the probability of it happening. So we're, we're very mindful about that. We try not to make too many predictions and, unless it's, it's a pretty solid probability. Um, we want to keep you open, especially you know, if it's a negative. Let's say there's a potential for you all to create something dramatic and there is still um, 
and there is still a possibility for hope, we would never tell you that that negative was coming because we want you to find that small probability of hope. And you all can find it, and you all have found it. There have been activities that happened on your planet that you transmuted the energy. There was a small probability for you to choose compassion, and you all did it. You talk about uh, the events of 9-11, um, where the world found compassion instead of entirely retaliation. Now, there were still a few issues there. There's still a few things that we would have liked to have seen turn out a little different. But for the most part, there, was enough, there were enough of you that made that choice of compassion instead of anger and resentment to see that you are creator beings and you co-created the situation, that you altered the timeline. You exceeded where we thought you were going to be because you could have generated in that moment a third world war for you. And you all decided, no, we've had enough. And you did that as a, as a collective a planetary collective because it would have drawn you all in. It wouldn't have just been a few countries. It would have been the entire world. So you altered that, that possibility. Um, there are more to come because there are more things that you all have to clear as a group. But again, it goes to these different versions. We want to go back to the different versions of the planets that are coexisting one on top of another. That you can be on the version that chooses the high vibration and your neighbor can be on the lower vibration. All right. When you're in the higher realms, you can see down into the lower ones. When you're in the lower ones, you can't see up unless you raise your vibration. Mm -hmm. That's how the angelic realms look down. That's how we look down. You've got to raise your vibration to connect with us. Guess what? All of you are in the fifth dimension right now. You're holding fifth dimensional level of consciousness at a steady rate right now. How's that feel? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> But it doesn't feel that different, does it? You all are expecting something to be night and day because this is how duality operates, right? But it's not that different because you are all constantly going up and down different levels of consciousness. You can hold 12 dimensions of consciousness, or 13 if you want to consider the source, in your body at any time throughout the given day. And you go up to get information in different realms. But you don't stay there, because to stay there would spoil the game down here. If you had all the answers, then you couldn't come back and play in the illusion. You know, it's like looking at one of those paintings that you can see many things in. And someone says, oh, look at the eagle. And you'd never seen the eagle before, but you wanted to find it on your own. And now that's all you can see. You can't see anything else. That's what it's like to go to the higher realms and get that information. You get the full download, and then you can't be ignorant any longer. So you don't often go up to get it because that would just spoil the game. So you get it through different dimensions. And each one has its own filter through which raw data, raw experience is projected. When you have experiences, raw data is collected and that is source's version of the truth. It's more of an absolute truth than anything, but even that is not absolute. You see every possible variation on a theme of how that event could have been interpreted. That source's perspective. Then as you move down in dimension, there are filters and overlays based on the dimension and the structure that get placed in front of that data to be able to view it and see it. Now, ascension happens because you start to hold a higher level of consciousness for a steady period of time. And as a result, because your vibration determines your physical vehicle, your physical vehicle alters, and that's why you are undergoing a physical change and, and you are altering your dense third dimensional body to a light body because you're holding a different level of consciousness. But you can go to all those levels throughout the day and you, they're not that different. They're slightly different, but they're not entirely different because they're all you anyway. Source is your energy. And it, you're not separate from it. So there's a part of you that always feels it as being familiar. It may be the subconscious part of you. But you're never disconnected from it. So it can't be unfamiliar to you. All right? How would we, as an experience, experience the biggest difference between the third and the fifth? Well, as you start to pay more and more attention to the now you become more aware of the subtle differences. It does feel different in your body. You feel more expanded and you feel more heart-centered. 
That's probably the biggest difference that we could point out for you. You feel lighter. Um, you feel you may feel tingling if your body is adjusting to the vibrational frequency. You may feel very tired when you first start to make that stretch because it uh, you're not used to tapping into sources energy for it, so you're using your own personal energy to make that stretch. When you open up to source energy, when you open up to unconditional love, you tap into unlimited power, unlimited energy. Anytime you drop out of that frequency, you drop out into fear, stress, worry, doubt, you unplug. And so there's limited energy. So you have to keep going back and plugging yourself in. And you all do this. And when you first start to make this stretch, it, it is a stretch. It's like working out at the gym and working out a muscle that hasn't been used for a long time. You know, it takes some practice. And um, that's where the fatigue comes from. It's nothing wrong. And after a while, it will start to go away. You'll hold it for longer and longer periods of time. So just be in the now as much as you can, and you will notice different sensations. Check in with your body. How do I feel when I'm walking down the street? That's why the now is so important, because you'll know how you always feel when you're walking down the street. And you'll know that this moment feels different from the next moment. That I feel different now. My body feels different. It doesn't feel as heavy. It's vibrating. I feel tingling in my third eye. Um, I feel a little bit of fear. Okay, so I check where the fear is coming from. So it's, it's all about just being coming more and more aware of your emotional states in your vehicle, listening to what your body has to tell you, how it feels, which also requires you to be in your body. You can't be half out of your body and get in touch with your body. So it's part of the reason why uh, the meditation happens at the beginning because we want to get you all in your bodies so that you can receive this information consciously. Um, so grounding and grounding exercises become very important in that. And a quick way to do it is just to see energy, uh, a golden white light coming through the crown of your head all the way down through your body, at your feet, around the core of the earth and all the way back up and out. And that's a quick, really quick way to, to ground. But you've got to be present in order to be more aware. That's the only way to do it. And it's a process. Each time you catch yourself, the faster you get back there, and the higher and higher you go, and the faster and faster you recognize when you're not in it. It's cumulative. It's not that you've got to keep starting at the beginning each time. All right? That was a quite beautiful exercise. Could you say that in slow motion, please? <laughs> <laughs> so you want to start to see a golden white light, and if you want to see it beaming from the galactic center, you can. All right, your entry point into this galaxy. And see it coming down and it's passing by Alcyon, the central sun that is in the Pleiadian star system. And it passes through Alcyon and past the other stars until it enters uh, the Helios system, which is your system. It is what we call your star, Helios. And it passes by Helios and it continues on by the planets until it finds its way to Earth. And then it continues down through Earth's atmosphere until it finds you on the planet. And then it enters through the crown of your head and moves all the way down through your third eye, through your throat chakra, through your heart chakra, through your solar plexus, through your, through your second chakra, and then through your root chakra, all the way down through your toes. Out your feet, down to the core of the earth. See it moving down through the, the building that you're standing in, through the ground, through all the different layers and crust, through the liquid, down to the core center. And then all the way back up. It journeys up and back home. Back through the center of the galaxy. How does that feel? You're all very grounded in your bodies. Yes, it feels a little different, doesn't it? But there are so many things that go on in your day. From, you know, um, those of you who are empathic, not wanting to feel other people's stuff. Or those of you who aren't empathic or are empathic who don't want to feel your own stuff. And you think the way that I can do that is to stay out of my body. So you're half out of your body. You're in it just enough to make it function. But the irony there is that until you get in your body fully, you're not going to be able to deflect a lot of that energy. Because through the laws of attraction, if you're present and dealing with stuff, you can repel, repel it because it's, it happens naturally because there's no attraction. So if there's no attraction, there's repulsion. 
So you got to be in it to do it. And if you're in the now, then you're in your body because you can't be in the now unless you're in your body. So it becomes really, really important for you all to get grounded. And all those wonderful things that you, you have memories of and wanting to do in the other realms and dimensions like teleportation and bilocation and manipulation of energy and matter, you can't do those until you're in your body because you've got to connect with the vehicle that you've got because you're not completing the circuit and you've got to have uh, you know, all, all engines running, so to speak. So you've got to be in your body. Question about being in the body and, uh, and the time. Um, I have days um, when I really don't know what day it is and what time it is. <laughs> because it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Because it doesn't matter. You're starting to let go of your concept of time. That this is Tuesday at 2 o'clock. It just is. And you're just present. And that's a good place to be. And that's why time and dates tend to run together. That's why you think, all right, how are we now halfway through the month? Because you weren't clinging to time. You weren't associating your actions necessarily with the time and the time frame. So we think of it as a... As a, a a really positive step that you don't know what day of the week it is. <laughs> right? Um, we, I have to work. Yes. <laughs> we understand that. So you can do things to help you, but in general, it just doesn't matter. It really doesn't. And it's going to change for everybody. Even how you work in the time frame and how long it takes you to get something done, it doesn't matter. Because in the higher realms, time isn't there, so whether it takes you in the linear time frame a week or a year is the same thing as the next second. You reinsert yourself somewhere on another timeline. So this timeline, um, you know, you're, you're working along and you say, all right, it's going to take me two weeks and I, I want to meet up with this person. All right. What you do is you just go to another timeline where if you had to have time, it would be two weeks later. All right. Um, or if it was a week, you'd go to the timeline that's a week later. So what you're doing, instead of, um, of caring about it, you just decide which version you want to go to and you just project yourself into that point. Time doesn't really matter because that other person could think it was five minutes or two years. You'll go to the appropriate vibrational match. Does that make sense? Do we hear a no? <laughs> All right. So we're giving two vantage, we're giving you two perspectives, and we know it's a little hard because you're still in linear time. Mm -hmm. So think about the Harper probability. In one string, you're creating a product and you're giving it to someone in a week. The next string, it's two weeks. A uh, third string, it's five minutes away. All right, so you've got these different versions. All right, for you. In the third dimension, you think that you are taking time and experiencing time and it's taking X amount to get there and then you're going to have a connection. In the higher realm, what you have is the now moment where you're having this experience, so you're on timeline A, and then you get to hop to what other version you want, which is the vibrational match. In the linear perspective, it could be the two weeks or it could be the five minutes. In the other realms, it just doesn't matter. You just go to another point on the string. And in this point, the agreed upon set of circumstances is that it's, you know, it took two weeks. That's when you agreed with that other person that you would come together on the timeline. For in the other realms, we don't care. Uh, if, if you're working with us and we say, all right, well, we'll meet you as you meet that other person, okay, because we, we don't have a sense of time, but you still do and you're still on the strings. So you decide, all right, I'm going to meet on that timeline with, um, that it takes two weeks. So I project myself there. For us, it's no different whether it's the two weeks or the five minutes. It's the exact same passage of time, if you will, for us, because it would be the next breath. All right? It doesn't matter whether it's two weeks or five minutes to us. They both feel the same. It is the next breath that we take. It is the next nanosecond, if you will. We're kind of mixing our analogies here because time doesn't exist at all, but we'll give you some point of reference. Mm -hmm. All right, so it would be the next breath or the next nanosecond. It doesn't matter. Does that help? Do you all to see that? That's every dimension but this one. 
because they're all multi-dimensional because you can see it, that's what it means. Um, another word for a dimension is density. So, you know, you're in fourth density and it's multi-dimensional in that you can see other aspects. We tend to just use dimensions instead of distinguishing between density and dimension because you've all got enough on your plate and it just makes it easier. But another way to phrase that would be, you know, in the third density you see uh, a linear or a unidimensional perspective. In the fourth, fifth, all the way up, you have a different density and a multidimensional perspective. Does that help you all? All right. Um, so it, it really it doesn't matter, and it always goes back to the now. It all goes back to the now. It's very, very important for you to all grasp that um, and how powerful and potent that really is. Because that's all there is. The rest is just an illusion. You said before that we're anyhow all on the way of uh, basically <laughs> experiencing a collapse where we find out that the list that we have, that the things that we're supposed to do or want to do or whatever, that we don't have the time to do that because time is so very much accelerated. And when you did this little uh, exercise before grounding us, and I really felt this difference of being here now and, and how centered I feel. And I really realized that basically I don't trust that love, that love will take care for me in the here and now. So and I think we are trying to run so very much through our time and doing all the things. Uh, could we not, how can we get there that we can simply trust that when we stay in the now, in that frequency, feeling this, that this really will take care for all the things that we on the other level have on our list? There are several things that are going on here. First, let's start with your perception of separation from source and being supported. Because a lot of it comes from support. I'm not going to be supported in what I want to manifest or create for myself. Um, and it goes to separation and abandonment. That you think that, you know, sources abandon me. I'm left here on this rock called planet Earth. But the truth of the matter is that you shut out that frequency so that you could have this experience. It didn't shut you out. You tuned it out, but it's always there. It's like pulling down the blinds. <laughs> the outside is always there, but you pulled down the shade. <laughs> All right? So that's one thing that goes on with many of you when you're trusting that things are going to be there in the time that they need to be there. Because you're not trusting that the universe is going to support you. You're not trusting in the process of creation because you feel that you're separate and you're no longer connected. So that's one thing that goes on there. Um, one of the other things with time and frequency and vibration is we said things move at different rates as you increase your vibration. So as you're doing things that are of a higher vibration, that are in alignment with your being, what happens is that things naturally flow. You don't hit resistance. So you don't have to stop and replan and regroup. It just manifests and it's easy and effortless and you get through 20 things where before if you were working the old way or you had resistance to something, you get through two. When you're in the flow of energy, when you're in alignment, everything moves faster. All right, Until you get up to a point and you, you shift dimensions. All right, so in the now, when you're in linear time, be aware of that. That if you're not getting through stuff and this list gets longer and longer, then you need to look at the list and see what's on it. Because chances are there's a lot of things on the list that you're doing out of obligation that are all lower vibrations. When you talk about obligations and you're not doing something because you want to be of service, but you're doing it because you're obliged to do it, it's a very different vibration. Can you feel the two differences in your body when we say obligation and service? So when you are doing something out of obligation, it's because there is some guilt or fear attached to it. You're feeling guilty that you're not good enough if you don't help out, that, you've got, um, that you're being selfish or that you're being lazy or, um, you know, the list goes on and on of how you color it. If you're doing something out of obligation, then you need to look at it and see why. Is it something that you just aren't vibrationally attracted to any longer and shouldn't be doing it? Or is it something that you would like to do out of service and you need to change your perspective of it? All right, so let's talk about family members and taking care of family members. 
sometimes that feels like an obligation. You all get locked into that, um, especially when, you know, if it's a, a child taking care of a parent, you're doing it out of obligation. You love them, but it still feels like obligation. So there's still some fear there, and a lot of times it's resentment that you feel you don't have enough time. So when you shift that and see that time is malleable, and that I want to do it because I love this person and I want to support them on their journey, that creates a very different vibrational state for you and it puts you in a higher frequency so that all the other things that you need to do will also flow because you're in the natural flow. You're not meeting that resistance. It's like friction. It doesn't move. It, uh, it, it won't go anywhere. And it takes time and effort. And where you all want to go is that it's timeless and effortless. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? That's where you're all headed. So... Um, look at those, those things on the list. Um, some of them you shouldn't be doing anyway. Um, if there's still fears, like I, I need to do it because I'm not smart enough or I've got, you know, I've, I've, um, I've promised to, to meet someone and they're not going to love me if I don't show up. I'm going to disappoint them and they're not going to love me. They're going to reject me. Those are the kinds of things you all set up in your belief systems. So you need to look at that. Uh, because if it's someone that loves you, um, they're not going to care one way or another. They, they want to support you. And think about if the shoe were on the other foot. If your friend was completely stressed out and they'd agreed uh, to meet you, would you be really upset because they're, they're struggling? No. You want to support them. Say, that's fine. We'll just do it another day. It's not a big deal. But you all set it out for yourselves so that you can clear these lower frequencies and fears that are there and you projected it into your physical world so you can recognize it. You get the mirror back at you. Because everything first manifests in the physical body, and if you ignore it there, then it starts to manifest in your external world. Most of you miss the cues in your body because you're not in your bodies and you're not in the now. So you can nip a lot of things in the bud by being in the now. You can just cut everything off its path. Say, oh, this vibration is out of sync with me because you're aware. All right, so does that help you with that, that, that uh, laundry list? Very common for all of you. You've got to look at the list, you know. Start crossing things off. It doesn't need to be done. doesn't need to be done. Um, because that's also a link to the past. And it's an energetic drain. And it gets bigger and longer. And it goes back further and further. So you're connecting to more and more timelines as you go. So you're just snipping the timeline and saying, all right, here I am in the now. What, what do I want to do? What am I drawn to do? Where's my natural flow of energy? Or you say, all right, my energy's not flowing. Why? Where's the fear? And you can't do that if you're in the past or the future. All right? Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, one year ago, I decided to let go of one belief system and to step out of the treadmill for uh, doing work, for making a living, to support family and stuff. So I decided I quit working and just trust and believe that something will show up which was me. After eight months, my bank account was zero. And uh, it was, yeah, I had to go start working again to support the family. So I tried it for eight months to change the belief system, but it didn't work. Um. There were other belief systems that were prohibiting you from, from creating that and allowing yourself to be happy through your creativity. Um, it's up your ancestral line. So there's a lot of programming that's there about the kind of work that you want to do, things that make you happy. Work isn't supposed to make you happy. Work is supposed to make you money. So some of those belief systems were still present. And you're cl you cleared a lot out, but you weren't getting the results that you wanted because there was still more to clear. All right? So, what we'd recommend, and you all can utilize this, is to, if you're in a job right now that's not fully in alignment, start thinking about what would be. What are the qualities that I, I want in my job? Do I want to work with small groups, large groups, medium-sized groups? Do I want to work with the same people constantly, or do I want a fresh influx of people? Do I want to do something creative with my hands? Do I want to utilize my analytical mind? Do I want to be able to speak and communicate? Um, do I want to make X amount of dollars? That's fine. You can focus on a number. Um, do I want to work so many hours? Do I need something that's structured? Do I need something that is 
fluid. Do I go to the same office every day? Do I work from home? Do I travel a lot? See all the things you get to think about. Of what is attracting you? What feels good to you? So even if you're still in this job that isn't your ideal, start thinking about the new opportunities so that you can make this transition. Um, and in the process, as you start to hold some of those belief patterns, you're going to trigger the, the fears, the, specifically the family issues and the judgment around your family about what you're supposed to be doing and what the role of the male is. That's up the genetic line. All right, because that's some of what you're shifting. Um, that you're working to create relationships that are not codependent, but that they are supportive, and that each makes its own contribution um, without making the other person be responsible. All right. Uh, having said that, you know we we know it's difficult being the head of a family, of parents with children. Uh, there is some sort of quote unquote responsibility that you've got. Um, but you've also got to learn to work with yourself and your own energy because if your energy isn't flowing, then none of that can happen. All right, it will eventually take its toll until you can't work anymore, or you can't. You create an event that keeps you from doing that thing because it doesn't enliven you. So, um, and how we and we'll we'll say specifically for you, we do see um, that the transition that you will make will be while you have another job. So you're not going to be making a cold cut and then starting again. And it will be a natural progression because you, you feel supported. You feel like there's some sort of stability there that allows you to make changes in a way that aren't jolting to you, that aren't feeling like you've just pulled out the foundations of your belief system, that you're repairing it or changing you know, all the boards on the house one at a time instead of uh, you know, ripping them off like a tornado that it's a little easier for you. And you all go through this. Um, you, you, what you're finding is a lot of people are shifting their careers. It's a lot of unemployment in the world. A lot of people who don't have jobs are looking for new jobs because they're out of integrity. And it's also forcing you to look at how you spend your days, that you're not working for money. You're working because you do something that you love that creates a service that you can give to the world, whether it is a perspective you know, if you're a writer or a, a painter or a singer or, um, you know, a belly dancer, it doesn't matter. Um, you're bringing a perspective and an energy, all right? Um, and it's something that you enjoy and that has value to it or whether you're providing a, a support for someone, you know, whether you are... Um, You've got somebody who's got grand ideas and they need a little bit of support so they can do more of the creative and you like doing the analytical stuff but you like being around the creative. So it puts you more in alignment with those kinds of things. And so you've got a lot of people who right now are uh, getting themselves back into alignment because these old structures that you've got, the political and economic systems of your world are crumbling because the vibration that you're moving into is too high to hold these structures. The structures aren't high enough. So you'll break them all down. And when you see them breaking down, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You've got to break them down in order to build something new. And what you're building, it's no longer this pyramidal system. All right, right now, all the energy goes to the top and the top, you know, the few controlling everything. What happens is you're now creating these little circles, these little pockets of community that overlap. And it's working in collectives, which is preparing you for the shift where you will once again be conscious of your connection to the collective, you'll feel and experience everything as if it were your own. So before then, you can see how your thoughts, feelings, and actions interact and uh, affect other people uh, in a physical way where there's a little bit of lag and you know people aren't telling you all their inner thoughts and feelings and emotions about how they're interacting with you, but you can start to sense it and pick it up before you get all of that information in the higher realms. It's kind of a, a practice ground for you. So, um, it's not that you were doing something wrong. We want you to know that as well. I've, I've said so much failure in myself. I tried for eight months and uh, I never enjoyed my life so much in those eight months without work and not changing my, my pattern of living. 
just doing the same things and going on holidays and traveling? Um, it, it helped you because it shows you what's possible. Now you just got to get the rest of yourself in alignment. You did a lot of clearing, but there's still a little bit more to do to help you. So just keep working with that list and it'll find its way in. It'll weave its way in so that you are doing something that you absolutely love. And it, um, you, oftentimes you don't have to make huge changes in your jobs. What you can also do is create a new position that didn't exist before that has everything that you want or you get the raise to help you to do all those other things. There are lots of ways that you can create and manifest it for yourself. Um, but don't limit yourself thinking, oh, it's never going to come, or that I can't have it. Um, what you get is what you need in order for you to see what programs are still running and still in place. All right? I have a similar question because I've done that uh, a few years back already, and it wasn't that unsuccessful, but I, I feel that I run into problems over and again. Like, like um, disturbed feels or something like that. And I would like to know, is it because of, you know, blockages in myself or is it outside in your paradigm? It's always in yourself, yeah. without exception. Um, look at your results. Look at what you're experiencing as you're going through the moment. You know, you may not have a job, so what's getting activated? What comes up? What resistance? What happens in your relationships with other people? Are you having arguments? What are you arguing about? What's the fear there that creates the argument? So um, here's the other thing about money. Money is not always a direct relationship to how you feel about money, the flow of it. It can be your other, uh, it can be energetic flow in other areas of your life. So if any one part of your energy isn't flowing, money can slow down. It's not just because you think money's evil or that you can't, you, you know, not smart enough to earn it or whatever belief you have about it. But money is just a physical representation of your energetic flow. So as you're going through the process, and again, back to the now, look and see what is coming up. Because I keep putting out this idea of this high thing, this high vibrational thing that I want to create, and I'm not getting it, I'm getting all this other stuff. Well, the universe wants to bring you that high vibrational thing. And in order for you to receive it, you've got to be at that vibrational level. In order to get you at that vibrational level, you've got to raise your frequency. In order to raise your frequency, you start projecting these things back at you so that you can see that you've got these fears so that you can release them and raise your frequency. Did you all get that? <laughs> all in one breath. <laughs> So this happens a lot and you all give up because you think, well, it's just not working. What you get is what you need in order to get what you want. It's that intermediate Mary step because part of you says, oh no, that's way too much to clear in order for me to go all the way up here. And so I want to take the easier route that's a little more gentle, that doesn't feel like the rug's been pulled out from under me, so I'm going to take the stairs instead of the elevator straight to the top. All right, so it's a step process. So what you start getting reflected back to you are all of the other fears, one at a time. And you start seeing them in your relationship, seeing it in your physical reality, so that you can clear it, and then eventually you've climbed all the stairs, and you can receive what it is you want. Deep breath. Everybody take a deep breath. And what's the difference between taking the elevator and the patient? Perspective. How willing you are to let go of your belief systems and let go of your fear. That's all it is. Because you can get there in a breath, but you've got to be willing to let go. And sometimes the way that you have it wired, some of your fears are wired to your survival. You may have created an issue um, at the time of a death in another lifetime, so that issue is tied to death. So that as you activate it, your, your survival is contingent on you keeping that fear until you recognize the fear and say, all right, how is this of service to me? And say, ah, well, in that particular lifetime, you know, I was working on that and that's what it did for me. And now, you know, it's not really applying here and I can let it go. I, I no longer need it. And you integrate at that point. But it, the, the difference between the two is personal choice and your willingness to let go of old belief patterns. And there are a lot of modalities that you can utilize. There are a lot of beings who are introducing new modalities at this time to help you work through your belief systems. 
you know, working with breath work, working with hypnosis, working with tone and sound, working with theta. There are a lot of variations. Um, and you pick the one that resonates with you at the time because at one point, one healing modality may work better for you. It depends on the issue. Um, and at other times, another modality may be better suited. So just trust your intuition. And you can work on yourselves. You don't have to have a healer to work on you. But we will say this, a healer holds space. Because you can get your vibration up to start to work and then you say, oh no, the fear. I don't want to feel the fear. And you drop out of that vibration. With a healer, they're holding that vibration. So when you drop out, you say, okay, well maybe I'll come back up. It's like having a friend say, you know, the water's pretty fine. Come on in. So they're holding that vibration for you. So you may drop out and you say, all right, maybe I'll try again. And you come right back up. Because it's not so scary when someone else is with you. When you're part of the collective. When you are connected. <laughs> so you can do it all on your own. You can connect with your guides, your angels. If you don't want to see an, a healer, ask your guides for help. We love it when you ask for help because otherwise we can't do too much with you because you've got free will and we don't want to interfere with that. But when you ask, we, you know, that gives us a lot of leeway. So ask us to hold space for you if you don't want to go to a healer or someone else who can hold that vibration. And different healers can hold different levels of vibration. That's why some feel a bit more potent than others. Sometimes to have a really potent healer is not going to be good for you because it's going to be too intense and you're going to feel like you just had your um, world spun around. So you need to do something that's a little more gentle, a little more gradual for you. And so you'll, you'll be drawn to a particular healer who works in a particular way. See, there's so many options. You've got lots of variety. It's a very exciting place to be. You mentioned before that this pyramidal structure is breaking down and that we're more and more working in collectives, overlapping collectives. And all of a sudden, I, I, I thought maybe this is also where our new whatever job situations are going to be going. Because I think either we are self-employed or we're working for someone where we are employed. And um, what if it is working also together in collectives and maybe yes. even temporary co collectives for a project, for whatever, in and out and being part of several collectives at the same time and, and with that being able to, to express our, our different talents, our different ideas. Does that make sense? Because all of a sudden I feel, why are we in, in a huge shift of work to begin with? Yes. Um, and you will work with more and more uh, collectives, uh, especially those of you who are in the healing fields. You're not going to work so much individually as you're going to start to work in group energy because it's exponential. So, um, you, you know, when you all ask, you know, what should I be doing for my job? You'll hear us, if, you, if you've heard us before, you, you hear a lot of times we say you're working for yourself and you think, well, what is everybody working for themselves? In a sense, yes, because you're creative beings. You're just going to create. You're not going to have to work for somebody to make money. It's very different, and you all have a hard time kind of wrapping your brain around it. You know, and this is a perfect time for you to take that little white ball of light in your mind and drop it into your heart. But in, in many ways, yes, you, you all are going to be independent, or you'll come together in little groups that will, will create something to be of service rather than to create a product that makes a lot of money that you then get to spend and consume. It's, it's a shift in priorities. and Ultimately, all of you, your life purpose on this planet is to be of service. And when you decide that you want to be of service or you're doing something to be of service, what you're choosing is the highest vibration possible. And when you're in the highest vibration possible, everything comes easily and effortlessly and very, very quickly. So remember that when you're thinking about what it is that I want to do. Uh, ultimately, it's always to be of service. Now, how do I want to do it? What are the variations on the theme? And what are the possible creative ways that I can be of service? And one of the ways that you start to fantasize about it and you know, really put it out to the universe that this is what I want, the universe brings you little clues and options. And puts, um, and your guides do this by the way, 
They put little uh, examples right in front of you and say, oh, well, that's interesting, I could do that. You know, and then uh, you know, they bring someone else who's giving you the exact same information. They give you confirmation. Follow it. Follow it. When things drop in front of you like that, it is an indication that that is something that you're supposed to follow. It's like breadcrumbs. All right? So follow the breadcrumbs. You all make it so difficult. You go into doubt say, oh, is that really a sign or not? Should I follow it or not? And then you stand there debating and you shut your energy down instead of saying, oh, look, a breadcrumb. Let's follow that one. All right? So go with it. And then if you say, oh, well, you know, this isn't so interesting. I've been there. And then you just go someplace else. It's, it's not, you know, it's, um, it's just vibrational choices. We make it sound so simple, don't we? It really is. But your belief systems make it very, very complex. And so that's what you're starting to clear, a lot of these belief systems, so that it's not complicated, because life is really simple. Creating and manifesting, really simple. You just think it's hard. And you think one thing is harder than another. To manifest a parking space is no more difficult to, than to manifest your dream job. The process is exactly the same. The universe doesn't care if it's a small thing or a big thing. It doesn't matter. But in your minds, the way that you've been conditioned, you think, well, those are night and day. You know, that's got to be really hard to create my dream job. But the parking space, maybe. <laughs> All right. So can you give uh, us a hint for our school system? I'm a teacher for uh, students from 15 to 20, and the school system is so uh, bad in Germany, but maybe not only in Germany, that the uh, students hardly don't want to come to school. We yes. have to fight them to school, even with police and letters and uh, all kinds of stuff. Yes. No. Because what you're feeding them is a low vibration because it's um, a controlled version of history. Um, you know, and they're being told a version of history. They're thinking multidimensionally, um, especially children who've come in within the last 10 years. They didn't have time to integrate into the third dimensional um, switchboard, if you will, the emotional template. Uh, it's like an old operator switchboard where you had plugs that you went in and out of. That's what you do energetically. So there wasn't enough time for them to integrate into this dimension and then um, transmute. So they came in already plugged into the fourth dimensional mindset. And they're trying to find a way to exist in the third dimension until everybody makes their way out. Um, those who are a little bit older around 20, they're already starting to plug in. They know that there's something different. They feel it. They're already part of a collective, and that's why they're also very good with the Internet mm -hmm. because they're, they're coming in with that collective mindset, and they're not limited in the way that you used to be. So it's like taking something that's expansive and trying to shove it into a tiny little box. So you're getting rebellion. Um, it's not just Germany. It's across the globe, mm -hmm. all right? Um, because there is a new way of learning. The way that you're, you're requesting that children learn is to utilize the mind and to utilize the intellect and go in and you know, look through books and records. Where well, the natural way to do it is to go into the Akashic records and they're far more vast. And that's what these students want to do. It's like torture to have to go and read a book instead of just tuning into the heart and getting the information. Or going on Wikipedia. Even yes. the teacher can't go into the Akasha for me. So easy. Not yet, but you're all getting there. And again, we, you know, this is coming very, very, very soon. And we, we know you're sitting here thinking, well, not soon enough for one. And two, how are we going to get that high in such short a time? It's exponential, your growth. So the last bit of it, it's really going to be a quantum leap. All right. So it is coming. And you look back six months ago and what changed six months as opposed to the previous year. Time is accelerating faster and faster and faster. The amount of growth that you had a year ago in a six-month period was about 50 years. The last year, about 100. Uh, or the last six months, about 100 years. The next six months, about 1,000 years. It's actually a little more than that, but... <laughs> because life didn't move at the same pace. You incarnated and the vibration was slower, so time seemed longer, and the lifespan wasn't as long. So you incarnated and you worked on maybe one or two, three issues, if you were really ambitious, maybe four. And you worked on that for the entire life. 
and it took you hundreds of lifetimes to just get one of those issues down. Now in this life that you're working on because you've got all this genetic material and all these vibrations and everything's coming up, you work on hundreds of issues at once. You all think, how do I have hundreds of issues? <laughs> but there are variations and, and you know, colors to each and every fear. And many times as you clear out one, you know, uh, a way to think of it in, in terms of colors is, you know, as you find the solution to the, the aqua, you also get the baby blue and the teal and all the other shades of blue with it. You're able to clear out in, in broader strokes than all the small little variations on a theme. But you're all getting there and it'll come very soon. So what do you do as a teacher? You start to look to connect in creative ways. Listen to what they're saying and what they're not connecting with and what they want to connect with. That's the way to start. All right? So we've got a, a bit more time. How are we doing? Concerning the Seville, can I tell my guys that they have cut blanche? Well, you can tell them that, but there's part of you that says, what is she saying? I want to work on that on myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because it's like you working really hard to put together a puzzle, and then someone comes and puts the last piece in for you. How fun is that? It's no fun. <laughs> you all want to do it yourself. <laughs> all right? So there are certain things that you'll let your guide work with because remember you're, they're your counsel and this, this aspect of you says alright do everything and another part of you says oh you know how are we going to learn if, if you do everything for us so you know we've got to do some things for ourselves but you know maybe you can lend a hand here or there um, so your guys aren't going to do everything but they're going to do everything they can to support you so that you can grow for yourself so it's like a human says something and the higher part of it says don't listen to anything Yes. <laughs> well, it's a bit like all of you saying, I don't want to experience any kind of pain or fear. And the other part of you goes, well, this is a dimension of duality. How can I experience joy if I don't experience separation? Don't so where's that? <laughs> yeah, so if you knew it was coming, because you think it's real, that's why you have this judgment. Your oversoul or your higher self, depending on what you're connecting with, knows that it's all an illusion, it's all a game anyway, so it says, ah, it doesn't really know what's going on, <laughs> but that's part of the game, all right, so it says, let's go ahead, let's do it this way. But the things that we do as humans ask for sometimes, the degree to which the, our guides will help us with it, is that the degree to which there is a correlation or an understanding between us and our higher selves? Exactly. Because you've got free will and they're not going to interfere. So your higher self says, all right, well, that's acceptable. We can let that come through. So how do we know? Well, you can ask. And then just, again, always go back to your results. What are you creating in the moment? What are you seeing? Your guides may help to set that up. But you've got to walk through the door. You, you're the creator. You're the one who's creating this. They may be helping you, but you're the one creating it. And they can open the door for you, but you've got to walk through it. All right, you've got to do the work. No one can do it for you. And your higher self wouldn't want it any other way. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Same thing with a healer. When you go to a healer, a healer is not healing you. You heal you always without exception. They hold the space. You alter your frequency and vibration. That's all that ever happens. They can show you where a frequency is. They can point it out. They can even put it in your field. But if you don't want it there, guess what? You're standing right beside them undoing the work. You say, ah, ah, that's cheating. I'm not learning it. I didn't get it. We're not there yet. Healers never heal you. And for those of you who are healers in the room, that lightens the load a bit for you, doesn't it? Because you all have this sense of responsibility that you think that your quality and level of healing is dependent on how that person feels when they walk out the door. But that may not be the best thing for them. You know, it may not, to be on cloud nine when they walk out the door may not be the best thing for them, for the soul growth. Um, so the other part of that is also to know that their perception of the healing can be vastly different than your own. So you can think it was a fabulous healing and they think, oh, I, nothing really happened. 
you can think, well, I didn't really feel much. I didn't feel much shift. And they think, wow, that was the most amazing thing I've ever experienced. Because everyone is going to experience things in the way that they need to experience them based on their filters, on their programming, and what they need to get from the situation. You can never control how another person is going to perceive something. All you can ever do is be heart-centered and be as honest as you can. That's why other people's opinions don't matter. Because it's all about their own filters and how they need to see the world. But you all get very caught up in um, how other people see you. Which is kind of ironic, really, because you get caught up in how they see themselves. Because how they see other people is really about how they see themselves. Did you, did you all follow that? Well, they can fix someone, they can point out a vibration, they can alter a frequency, but unless that person is willing and ready to, to hold that frequency, um, they're not going to. So you can have someone go to an amazing healer and that healer can adjust their vibrational field. The, you know, the person may allow that to happen, but that person is going to reset their field to match that belief because they're not ready to let go of it. Um, some healers tend to be, as we said, um, seem to be better than others because of the vibration that they're able to hold and maintain, or they're able to see into an energetic field. But it doesn't mean that, um, that they're doing any of the healing, ever. Ever. And it is an ego trip for many, many healers. Some have a very hard time because they feel responsible for the person who's, who's come to them for healing, and others take it on as an ego trip. All right? They can thrive off of, you know, I, I um, send people out of here whole and healthy. Well, no, other people do. So it depends on also their issues and what they need to work on. But um, so, so it can be as powerful reading the dictionary as using a healing modality when your own vibration is just the way it is. Yes, if that dictionary triggers you, yes. Uh, the slightest thing can trigger you to, to release, to see, oh, you know, I, I created that for a reason. Um, and there can be a really powerful modality. Let's say you're working with Reiki, all right? Reiki's kind of a blanket healing to us. It's not laser-like precision, but it's got a, a, a lovely vibration about it. But if you're somebody who still has issues with the dark priests of Atlantis, you're probably not going to have Reiki done on you. Because each of these modalities connects to a grid, all right, a vibrational grid. And if you have issues with any of the um, timelines that connect to that grid and you're not ready to let go of them, you're not going to use that modality. You'll find something else to connect to for that particular issue. All right. And once you clear that issue, you may be, oh, well, that's an interesting modality. I've never seen that one before. <laughs> and it's been there all along. Does that make sense? Do you all understand? Mm -hmm. So um, there can be things in your past lives that keep you from accessing certain modalities and not wanting to work in particular ways. Um, and as we said, you can have a magnificent healer, but it's all dependent on you and your belief system. Also, that's the other thing. If you believe it takes time and, um, and uh, medicine in order to heal your body, you could go to the best healer in the world. And it wouldn't matter because your belief system says it takes time and you've got to work in a certain way. So until you clear that belief, you're not going to be able to receive healing in a particular way. So you've got to go, it's like digging always, going to that, that bottom, the core of that belief system and kind of clearing that out first and working your way up. Sometimes you start at the top and work your way down to eventually get there, but you, you keep going, you keep digging deeper and deeper. It's fair to say that people who believe in medicine and believe in, in traditional allopathic healing modalities, that they always have a reason for doing so. Because sometimes that could be, that could be a good thing to remember. Uh, like, for example, when I, in the beginning, tried to, to tell my mother about other ways of healing than pumping herself full of medicine, that was a time that, that where I experienced that after a time that there are, she has her reasons. 
Yes. And it's very hard for you all, especially with family, uh, to allow them to do something in a way that you know is not the fast route to healing and well-being. But they're choosing the vibrational match and choosing the path that's going to give them the experience that they want to have. And it's very important that you don't judge that as wrong, that you just allow it to be their vibrational choice. And what happens is that if you have a different way of being, you can hold that frequency and you can send them that thought that you know there are other options and there's this other frequency if you want to work in this other way. Because every time you deal with the body at the physical level, unless you change the energetic template, the physical ailment or problem is going to come back because you've got to change the template. So you can project those ideas and hold that vibration that they get or understand something. And it makes it easy. It's like holding the ceiling up for them. But they've got to get there in their own way. Now, remember, there are two timelines here. Well, there are multiple timelines, but there are two versions right now that are coexisting. So um, you're going to find them falling apart. And those who want to work in the old ways and aren't raising the vibration are going to go down one path. You're going to go down another. Now, here's something else when we talk about timelines. It's not that you are changing and everyone else around you is necessarily changing, but you change the timeline that you stand on in which you join everybody else's in that vibration. So really, it's only you that's changing. You're not changing your environment. Would you mind saying that again? So a lot of times when you think about making changes, you think, oh, I made a change and now I'm bringing in this person or that person or, you know, the... Everything is changing, the world is changing, the events are changing in the way that I'd like them to go. It's not that you're standing on that same timeline and everyone else is making that agreement. You're putting yourself on a timeline where that is the frequency in the agreement. Ah, yeah. okay. Remember, you're always shifting yourself between these timelines. So it's not that you've got to wait until everybody else wakes up. You're putting yourself in that frequency. You're holding it and you automatically move yourself to that other timeline. Again, dear? In this way, I don't manipulate? Uh, yeah, you don't need to. You don't need to because you know everybody's going to go to the timeline that they need to. Everybody will be on the most appropriate timeline for them. And you're sharing the agreed upon past and future uh, vibrations in the now. It's all agreed upon. It doesn't, it doesn't really exist. That's another way of healing. If you have wounds from the past that you're holding on to, change the event in your perception of the event and see it playing out in another way because that puts you on a different timeline in which that event played out in a different way. And then you can let it go. It's one way. It, it does, it's kind of a backdoor way of doing it because it puts you on another timeline so that you've got to, it alters the frequency because you're then on another timeline. Are you with us on that one? Is that why they say it's never too late to have a happy chakra? Yes. <laughs> because it's all an illusion. You can pick a new string that has that, that happy childhood. Yeah. So all right. I can choose a string where whatever event didn't happen, and so I can skip the whole thing about healing the wounds of that if I didn't have the event in the first place. Yes, but another way to think about that is that you're changing your perspective of what happened so that there is no charge to it. And when there's no charge to it, you, you automatically will shift to another timeline, one that doesn't have a charge to it. <laughs> Got it? <laughs> but it's really about neutralizing all those charges because as soon as you neutralize the charge, you put yourself on another timeline. And you are in a different version. So on that version... There's no resistance, it's not there, so in, a, in essence, it didn't happen. Yeah. As far as our perspective here in the now is concerned. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> or it doesn't matter. There's, there's no charge to it. It doesn't matter if it happened or if it didn't happen. It's, there's no vibrational charge. And, and that is because there's only the now. And there's any kind of pain or any kind of, of, of disconnection or any sort is always experienced in the now. And that is why that is possible. Yes. <laughs> Drop the energy from your head down to your heart. <laughs> All right. 
Rashiba energy. Mm-hmm. It's core energy. All right. It's, uh, you know, we're not overly familiar with that term, but we find it through your frequency. So uh, as we see it, it's, it's core energy. It's, it's like Kundalini um, coming from through source energy, coming also through the earth. Uh, also uh, planetary. So it's, it's universal energy. Does that make sense to you? No? Yes? Um, what doesn't make sense to me that I heard about this energy that it um, has been used in a wrong way in the past? It's universal energy. It's universal energy. Energy is neutral. It's just your projection of it and what you associate with it, whether it's dark magic or white magic. Mm-hmm. It's neutral. It's just a name that was given for the manipulation of the energy itself. But it's source energy. It's kundalini as it's coming through the person. All right, it's, They're activating their own kundalini energy and projection of it. <laughs> Even with the dark priest of Atlantis. There are, there are um, some of the, the methods and modalities used in the, the extraction of energy um, comes from those rituals that we used at that time. Um, then you've, you've also got planetary energy that got accessed extraterrestrial as remember the Atlanteans also remember their, their extraterrestrial roots and communicated with other beings and other star systems. So they utilize that stellar energy and their alignment with star systems and it's ultimately universal energy. All right. Yes. And I know that I'm not healing her. <laughs> and what is it going to do? She's going from depression to depression. Uh, she needs to have her genetic line cleared because uh, all of that, that persecution, yeah. all of that subjugation, all of that um, the survivor's guilt in there as well that's in her ancestral line. I don't have a right to live when so many died. Yeah. Uh, which seems a bit twisted mm-hmm. uh, when you think about it, that people would normally feel happy to be alive, but when the other family members all perished, it's guilt that they're the only one. Why them and not someone else? So that's all in there, um, especially down that bloodline. You know, you all are trying to heal on a massive level. So you can work with her to with her belief systems all right um what she thinks about her cultural as well as religious origins sometimes it's just cultural mm-hmm. it's you know there's no religion in it it's it's the bloodline and the culture so um and her most negative thoughts about it and let her fill in the blank mm-hmm. um because the belief system that's in there, and this is why she's in depression, I don't have a right to be here. Mm-hmm. That's got to be healed down that line. Mm-hmm. And that's what's happening here. Uh, people are stepping into the fact that, yes, I do have a right to be here. And I want to change the vibration and I want to accept others. So you're all doing that. You're all working on that uh, today as we're talking about all of this. You're helping to anchor this energy here so that people start to love themselves. And guess what? If you love yourself, you then can love others. You've got to give to yourself first. Because if you don't, then you're going to be energetically bankrupt. And then you get resentful and angry. You're like, I'm always giving my energy everywhere else, but none to me. What about me? And that creates that pattern. So being selfish, quote unquote, is important. You've got to give energy to yourself. You can't always give it away. You've got to complete the cycle 
part of the cycle is receiving and giving to self. Right, so that's what we'd recommend that you work on with her, the genetic line stuff. Thank you. Yes. All right, so we're about out of time. Anyone who hasn't asked a question who wants to ask one? No? Uh, yeah, in respect to the school system, um, sometimes when I think about um, changing the school system, it uh, feels like very overwhelming. But what I learned today is with this timeline that it is possible when I as a teacher go in the class and perceive that what I do with the children as changing because I have a different approach, then I actually are changing the system in that moment. Yes. Too. Yes. Especially when you engage in creativity and free thinking, thinking outside the box, free association. Um, it's a very different vibration and frequency than a classroom that is all about rules and regulations and sticking to the old ways of thinking. So automatically you shift the vibration and the energy of it. It becomes a much more appealing place for you to be and for you to nurture your own creativity and your questioning and to also support that questioning in your students because they've got it. Nobody's supporting it. Nobody's encouraging that they question and say, why? Why? Why are we doing these things? It's very important. You know, we said discernment. It's going to be one of the most important things that you really master as you move into the higher realm. So you've got to start asking why. Is this really what I think? Is this really what I feel? Is this for my own highest good? Am I in alignment with this? So it's, it's a big one. It's an important one. And it's also hard for you all to think of institutions as no longer being there. It's hard for you to think of life without an educational system. It's hard for you to think of life without a government, without a monetary or banking system, without religion. In five years from now. Um, yes. Well, now there's no time. Even <laughs> more time. Yes. You can step into that today. There is a version where none of that exists today. So you can step into that vibration. And the amount of time it takes you is just how willing and ready you are to let go of your belief systems. But you all, all of you, just take note of how you're feeling in your body right now as you think about that. What would life be without money? How, well, how would it be structured? It sends a lot of you into panic. Or, well, if we didn't educate people, what would life be like? How would we, you know, how would we get information? Well, you, you go to the Akashic Records. So it's also very, very important for you all to start fantasizing about what life is like in these higher realms. What do you want your life to look like? How do you want to spend your days? How do you want to interact as a society? Uh, and if you find yourself terribly triggered by that, take a character out of a book or out of a movie and see them living the life in the future. Because... When you do that, it takes you out of the picture and stops, activate, it stops activating all your survival issues because sometimes you get triggered in the process. So if you can't think about yourself there, think about a character there because that still opens the window. It still allows you to think outside of the box. And you all are so focused on 2012 and making this transition that that's phase one of your life plan, of your blueprint. There is a phase two, and that's the multidimensional phase. None of you have started to really think much about that. <laughs> and what you will do after that. What will life be like after it? So you need to start thinking about it and fantasizing about it. And you have different, you, many of you have vastly different programs from part one to part two. What do you do after you go through ascension? What do you want to work on? Uh, because it changes. Some of you become uh, galactic teachers. You think, well, here I am on Earth. How in the world am I going to be a galactic teacher? <laughs> well, your masters, remember this. And as you learn how to go through the process of ascension, you become, and, and you're being called this already, the golden children. Because your auric fields will look golden when you go through this process. 
and you will have been the ones who learned and worked through how to go through ascension and there will be other beings who want to know how did you integrate duality and you will teach them because you create a brand new universe so it's stepping into the role of create a being as we said it's going to require you all to step into that energy and claim your power as part of source energy you're not separate from it you are it and so is every other being on this planet so if you're all part of source energy how can any one of you subjugate the others control and manipulate you can't it just can't happen you have free will and so here you are so we'd like to leave you with that to start dreaming about what you want life to be like how fabulous can it be you can create some really spectacular things when you let your imagination go so start start playing around with it you know uh, start using your favorite characters so no dears that we're always with you all you have to do is ask for our assistance and we'll help you in any way that we can as we always say it may seem like your imagination but what is your imagination anyway and we will tell you it is your connection to the higher realm so you're constantly there anyway you just label it this is creative this is imagination this is reality over here but it's not reality is closer to your imagination than it is to what you think is really reality so trust in what you get ask for confirmation if you're doubting what you're getting you'll get it your guides will have, your guides will help you we will help you and until that time dears we'll be watching and waiting and sending many well wishes it has been a true pleasure and an honor